Welcome back to my channel, Sass here. I'm here for another recap of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. I'm not feeling too well, friends, Sasters. I'm not feeling too well. I think I got um, <clears throat> some type of cold. I'm congested. I've been sneezing. And I just before I hit that record button, I had a coughing fit. So I done took some day quill and I'm hoping that, you know, <sighs> it cleared up. My eyes have been watering. Yeah, I'm just a mess. But I'm here. Oh, yes. I'm here. This episode is the reason why I don't take these people seriously. I have said this many, many times. And the preview for next week. Oh, I'm definitely not taking them folks seriously. Just a mess. Y'all, they are a mess. Mm. Let's start off with Jasmine and Gina. Y'all, I'm not going to keep y'all. Okay. So, we know Jasmine and Gina have been fussing and a fighting child. And she found out through his emails that he had since 2014 on his phone that he took his ex, and we all know how um, Jasmine feel about that ex, because Gino sent her tatas to the ex. <sighs> so Jasmine is upset with Gino because he took the ex to Lugolan. So Gino says, listen, I forgot. He threw a fit. He done knocked over the chair. And he proceeds to walk off. Now we see Jasmine crying, a snot flying, honey, in her room, biting her nails. She nervous. She's wary. I never seen Gino like this. I never seen him like this. I think I want a father. I haven't heard from him for hours. Meanwhile, Gino is literally outside the door. I don't know where he is. You don't know where he is? Just go like this. Hey, Gina. Hey, how you doing? Gina was a hop, skip, and a jump from her window. So here's Gino. He's upset. Because the only thing they've been doing is fussing and fighting. And she don't trust him. So here's Jasmine. I want to go find him. I don't know where he's at. Gino, 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 where are you, Gino? Hello, hello, Gino. Oh, right there you are. So she literally walked 10 steps, and she was like, hello, Gino. <laughs> so they sat down, and they talked, and they sat down, and they talked, and they made up. Both of them talking about they love each other, they cherish each other, they want to be the galba. Both of them cries, not fly. Oh. So everything is good. They are kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy. They at some spring, some spa, wherever they're at, up in the waters. And so then it's time. It is time for Gino to break out that cheap ring. Not Dominique. Not Cuban zirconium glass. It looked like he got that from the bubble gum machine. So it's time for him to propose to Jasmine. I will say this. That outfit that Jasmine had on, I liked it. The little crop top and the skirt to match. I was like, okay, Jasmine, that was cool. That was real cool. Gino, not so much. Gino, just not so much. I... So they go walking, it's raining, you know, and he was like, can I take a picture of you? Because the view was beautiful, and she was like, oh, well, of course. So she turns around in the rain, and she's like, so he gets down on his old bended knee, and he was like, will you marry me? And so she was like, Yes, of course. <laughs> so here is that beautiful moment. This was like a broke down version of the notebook 
with the rain and the standing and the kissing and the proposal. So she's looking at the ring, and you know the producers are shady boots. And they were like, what you think about the ring? And she was like, oh, the ring. The ring. Uh, the, the ring. Uh, it's a little trinket. Uh, is, is this like a daemon? I don't even think this is a daemon. Is this a daemon, Gino? Gino, is this a daemon? It ain't no Oh, God, no. This ain't no daemon. This is... Is my finger turning green? Is my finger turn? There's the diamond. <laughs> she said, this ring is like Gino. I mean, I wouldn't think of anything else. I mean, his whole wardrobe cost it $2.99. <laughs> God. Of course this is a ring he paid. Meanwhile, Gina's in the... G Meanwhile, Gino's in the cut like this. His cheap ass. And see, this is why I don't take any of this seriously. Because in the preview next week, now they've been together for how long? They done had knocked down, drag out fights. She done went upside his head. She done pulled off his hat. And next week, He's going to tell her about a prenup. Let's move on. Let's talk about Memphis and Hamza. These are the only two in this whole show that's making it work. <laughs> they making it work because see Hamza and Memphis are married and they got a baby on the way either she done had the baby or she's pregnant and honey from the pictures I've done seen they look happy healthy and love and um, Hamza is over here in the United States Hamza said don't you play with me don't play with me I got a refrigerator repair degree And I see the picture of Memphis's ex, the baby daddy and the ex-husband. If I find it, I'll put it up right here. Ain't he fine? I said, Memphis, I ain't even mad at you, honey. I'm not mad at you, not now a bit. You spent four nights with this man, okay. <laughs> and then Hamza is a little cutie himself. you see Hamza getting that haircut. I was like, you better get that fade. So Memphis, she was so foolish acting. I can get on board with this relationship. So remember, Memphis is at the hotel to think. And she done packed enough stuff for like three days. And I said, Memphis, you ain't got no luggage. You done shoved all your stuff in some Kroger bag. I said, not the Kroger. I said, not the Kroger, but I said Memphis. And Memphis, that wig, girl, that went right here along that edge. And see, I can talk. I'm going to talk about it because, see, right here, mine's busted. But, honey, your wig looking a little dry. It's looking a little dry. So, she is there to think about the prenup and what she going to do and Oh, this bunch of... Meanwhile, down at Hamza's, honey, they got it going, honey. They are dancing. They singing because it's time for the celebration. And did y'all see that gentleman? I said, you better do, honey. He got up and he did the two-step. He went. Hey. Come on. Hey. I said. Memphis. You better get your shoes on and two-step on up in there with the rest of them. Honey, that man was getting it. I was like, okay. <laughs> they were having such a good time. And they all seemed so happy. They even sent her a video. And so she's like, they're sending me a video and now I feel bad. Girl, take your tail home. Go back to Hamza and marry that man. So she goes in there. 
And they've been celebrating. Hamza is all pacing back and forth. He was like, Lord, I don't know what's up with Memphis. She don't seem like herself. And so Memphis really didn't have time to talk to Hamza because it's celebration time. Honey, these people ready to party. So they go in there. And so they got uh, Memphis all done up and they're singing, they're dancing, honey. They done put her in a horse and buggy. She's going through the city. I said, woo-wee. Honey, I would love that. I would like, come on, give me more, honey. Yes. <laughs> honey, they was having such a good time. I love that part. I love that part. I just, I, oh, it was great. So, later on, it's time to talk to Hamza. And the sister, you know, was translating. And bottom line is, Hamza agreed to sign the paperwork for not a prenup, but a postnup. Okay? Because she can't do the prenup, so she had to do the postnup. She seen the love that Hamza's family is showing her. And I think she really do think that Hamza loves her. She loves Hamza. Now, she was talking to her mama. Her mama was like, no, you can't be doing that. You cannot do this. You have to make sure your children are okay. This, you, you just can't do it. But Memphis, she went ahead and, you know, talked about the post-nup and, you know, Hamza agreed to sign the paperwork. You didn't even need to go to a hotel for that, Memphis. And next week, I think, is their um, wedding ceremony. It looks like it's going to be beautiful. I love looking at um, different weddings, wedding destinations, weddings of other cultures. I just love looking at that stuff. I love to see how they're all dressed up and their makeup and the music. I love it. I love all that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, next week's, um, wedding. So anyway, I know it was a lot of conversation between that sister, Memphis and Hamza, but y'all, I just don't have it to do. Uh, especially knowing that they are married now with a child or on the way. Child, let's move on. I haven't forgot. Oh no, Mike, you bald-headed fool. I haven't forgot. I won't forget your little Instagram post. I'm here to remind you every week that you are low down and I don't feel sorry for you one bit. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. So, here we are. We still have dumbass Mike pleading, confused about how Amina is acting. Mm -hmm. Amina has been giving him the cold shoulder. Amina, to his face, have been rolling her eyes. She obviously don't want to have nothing to do with you. So, Amina is talking to her mama. And so, it was so funny. She was like, the mama was like, are you, you and Mike, are you and Mike good? And so, Amina says, yes, we're good. And that sister, honey, she came out of nowhere and said, she lied. Mama, she lied. I know you lied. Because, see, they've been fighting, mama. They've been fighting. Mm-hmm, they've been fighting. <laughs> and so, the mama said, what? So, here is Mama Amina trying to talk some sense into Amina. We all know that's not going anywhere. Amina doesn't want Mike, period. Honey, ever since it was no ta-tas and no surgery, it was bye-bye-bye. We all know this, but the person who don't know it is Mike, Mr. Magoo. So again, there's this tension there's this awkwardness. There is no love there. Honey, Amina is checked out. So, I'm not going to keep y'all with this. So, Mike was talking to Amina's mama. And Amina's mama is trying to um, be the mediator. 
and she's trying to tell Mike about how Amini is and to take it slow and to listen to her. Blah, blah, blah. Here is Mike with that darn translator app telling his side of the story. All the warning signs are there. All of the red flags being thrown in Mike's face. So it's time to go out. Here is Mike telling Amina she looks lovely. Amina, literally, they're in the back of the cab. Mike is right here. Here's Amina. She don't want no parts of her, her body, her hair, her nails, her feet touching Mike. She's on her phone. Just short and cold. She, she's, she's done. And so Mike is like, I don't understand why she's like this. They went to go shoot pool. She's like, just get, just get away from me. Just, I don't understand why she's like this. I'm confused. That's the word of the day, friends. All these cast members are confused. Even though it was, it's been slapped in their face. Yo, I've been sitting here with one earring. Why didn't y'all tell me? Now, it's time to have the sit-down conversation. And Mike is sitting there still confused. He don't know what she wants. Mike, you don't know what Amina wants? Let me tell you. Amina told you that you're weird. Amina told you that you're strange and she don't like the way you be staring at her when she's sleeping. Amina said that you're a slob. Amina said that you're disgusting to your face. Amina said that if you don't pay for my top ties and my surgery, there's no wedding. You had your father, your grandfather, your homeboy, and your homegirl telling you that Amina ain't no good for you. Your homegirl said, get on the plane and go home. Your homegirl said, she's using you. She's not good for you. She thinks you're disgusting. Get on the plane and go home. No, no, no. What did you do, Mr. Magoo? You stayed there. For two more weeks. Because Amina said, I don't want to end it. I don't want to end it. Instead of you saying, it's done. Then you came out your mouth, we're going to have sex. What? And then Amina, literally in your face, rolled her eyes. And I believe threw up a little bit in her mouth. You would rather get booty while law she was playing you. And you got that booty in her children's bed. I feel no type of sympathy for Mike. And everything that came his way, he deserves. I don't want to hear no mess about, well, she was giving him mint signals. Well, he's never been in a real relationship before. He's a grown man. And when somebody tells you you're disgusting, you're just going to be like, okay. <laughs> don't feel not one bit sorry for me. And then the mama the went and told Mike that she has never been in a real relationship. Talking about Amina. He believed that. Even though Amina has told him the several relationships she has been in. And then Amina said lies. <laughs> Amina said that's a lie. Amina says I've been in several. I mean several relationships. Child. Look at me. And so. She says Mike is done. She says Mike is done. It's done. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. It's over. And so here's Mike. So we're not going to be together. I'm confused. I... 
So you were just using me for money? You were using me for money? Is that what it is? It says I was not using you for money. Okay. You was the one that was out here paying the rent. So, oh well. That's what it is. So Mike was like, okay. Well, everything that's in that house, everything that I bought is going back to the United States with me. And I was like, how are you going to get rent a center furniture on, to, the, uh, to New York? I was like, Mike, you're going to get a whole couch, chair, coffee tables, refrigerator, stove, kitchen table, shoes, the kitchen chairs, lamp. You're going to get all that, and you're going to send it back to New York. Now, Mike, stop. So, Mike was like, so that's what you're telling me? And she was like, it's done. It's over. I don't want to have nothing to do with you. I don't love you. We're not going to get married. At this point, I don't think we can be friends. You make me sick. How many more times I need to tell you? <laughs> get away from me. And so Mike, he gets up. This grown man gets up and says, I'm done. I'm done with this. <laughs> he's breathing all hard. He's, child, he's breathing all hard. The top of his bald head shining from the street lamps. He done went running across the street. The cameraman is trying to follow him. He done jumped over the side of a building. <laughs> and did y'all see him look back? How embarrassing. How embarrassing. Mike, 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 Mike. You done embarrassed yourself. And everybody that you love. So the producers are back with Amina. And she's crying. And um, uh, the producer says, do you think you made the right decision? And she says, I don't know. Is that good enough? Is that good? Was them good tears? Cool. Did y'all see that guy over there in the back? Hey. How are you? Hey. <laughs> Let me leave these people alone. Child, let's move on. Let's talk about being in mahogany. Another embarrassing. Another embarrassment. Being just out here embarrassing himself and everybody that you love. Y'all Americans are just embarrassing the whole country with your foolishness. So we have Mahogany and she's talking to her dad. Because see, Ben wants a one-on-one -on -one with her parents. Mahogany don't want that child. She was like, why you want to talk to my parents? That is not a good idea. So the dad is like, what's up with y'all? What's up with you and this old man with that wonky eye? Why he stand us up? That wasn't very respectful. So here's Mahogany. Mahogany says, Papa, he wasn't the same guy that he was online when we chatted with each other. He's different. So the dad said, well, listen, if it's not really cool, if it's not really working out, why are you with him? It seems very strange. So she was like, are you going to talk to him? And he said, I don't know. He said, I don't know if I want to talk to this man. So we have Ben. Ben still feels like that there's some love here with him and Mahogany. He says that since... Mahogany did not respond to his 28-page dissertation slash thesis. He was in his feelings. So he didn't go out for breakfast. But he didn't know that her parents was there. So now he's like, oh my God. I didn't know the parents was there. Now I have to have a conversation with the, with the uh, parents. So it's time to meet up with Mahogany. And when I tell you... Ben, what the hell were you wearing? 
What in the? What is going on with that hat? It was the hat and it was the sweater. I said then. So he's there. Here comes Mahogany. You can tell by Mahogany's facial expression, body language, she didn't want to be there. And he knew this because he said that she didn't want to be there. So she was like, hello, hello, here's, here's, here's a note. Now the father did not want to meet up with Ben, so he put pen to paper. And when I tell you, it was in Spanish. And so Ben was like, I can't read this, so you're going to have to translate. Mahogany's face was, oh my God, she was like, yes, it says I'm um, not going to meet today. <laughs> Meanwhile, everybody who speaks Spanish was screenshotting that letter, talking about that. They wouldn't say what it say to my Spanish people. This is what I think it said. In my mind, Mahogany's dad said, listen here, you dirty old son of a bitch. If you come anywhere near my daughter again, I'm going to cut off your peen and shove it in your mouth. See, that's what you do. What you do is take your feet to the street, get on the plane, and don't ever contact my daughter again. I will hurt you. And you owe my wife an apology for standing to us up. Love, Papa Mahogany. See, in my mind, that's what the letter said. So anyway, so here is Ben and Mahogany going back and forth. Mahogany says, you are not the guy I thought you were. You're different than online. You're having this, you know, fighting with your ex, and then you just seem like a different man. And then you stand us up. And so then Ben says, I wanted you to miss me. Fifty-two-year-old band playing games. I wanted to be wanted. I said, oh no, Ben. Oh no. Mm -mm. And so Mahogany said, what? She said, what? Ain't you a little too old to be playing these games? You wanted me to miss you. You wanted to be wanted. She said, I had enough. She said, I done had enough. It's time to go. I'm ready to go. <laughs> and she said, seriously, I just wanted to drop off my papa's note. I didn't even want to be here. Okay? This is all the reason why I'm here. So Ben says, oh, so you don't want to be here? Okay. He says, so you, you want to go? She said, I'm going back. And so Mahogany's walking off, and then she had this deep sigh. So here's Ben. He had to go back to the room. He's packing up, and he is saying, got to meet up with Mahogany. We got a four-hour drive. It's going to be a long four hours. I haven't heard from her. So he goes outside with his bag. Her car gone. I said, nah, I'm Mahogany. I know you didn't. I know you didn't. Car gone. Don't went to the room. Some man answered. He was looking at him like, we got a problem. <laughs> so Ben, he was like, oh, 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 I'm sorry. I got the wrong room. He goes down to the lobby and baby, the man said she checked out last night, dude. <laughs> she gone. And so Ben is like, my God, my God. Ben, Ben, you said that God sent mahogany for you. That's what you said. Honey, mahogany sent her feet to the street, to her car, and she brought that road up without you. That's what God said. So now Ben has to get a car to take him four hours back to wherever he was. And it's going to cost him $250. I said, <laughs> Ben, just embarrassing. But see, saying all that, 
She's done left him. She done said, I don't want to be here. She left him stranded. He had to pay $250. But in the next episode, we see Ben and Mahogany meeting up. This is why I don't take this show seriously. And she's telling Ben, I'm confused. I don't know what I want. And they go in for the kiss. Let's move on. Last and certainly least, I'm going to say this right up front. I'm not going to keep y'all. This will be the last time I speak of Usman. This season is the last time I speak of Usman. I'm done. I'm done of talking about Usman. I'm tired of seeing Usman. I'm tired of him embarrassing himself with these hard-faced women. I'm tired of them. I will not speak of Usman again. So here's Usman talking to his homeboys, and he's telling the story about how Hardface not need Kim done threw water in his face. So the homeboys is like, oh, we tried to tell you. We tried to tell you that something like this is going to happen. And then that manager of his, I don't know what's wrong with his head, he had a nerve, and I mean the nerve, to say, what if someone would have caught that on camera or videotaped it and put it out on the internet? Who? Sir, Mr. Manager, you need another job because I can guarantee you ain't nobody paying any mind to Usman and not need Kim. In fact, honey, ever since they've been there, I ain't seen that now and go up to them and say, hey, hey, can I have a picture? Hey, hey, what their soldier boy? What their soldier boy? Hey, y'all, soldier boy, ain't no person did that. Ain't nobody videotaping that mess. And furthermore, dummy, you do know you're on television, right? Just wind in between the ears. So here's Usman. I don't know what made her do it this way. I don't know what made her do it. I don't know how to feel. The women here in Nigeria, they are respectful. They are submissive. You're not dealing with a Nigerian woman. You're dealing with a white woman from the United States. Look, what, if you want a Nigerian woman, get a Nigerian woman, Usman, with your stupid ass. Y'all got cake thrown in your face, pies, water. Stupid. So here it is. Here's Kim back at the room. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. She's packing. So the producer's like, wait a minute, are you leaving now? She was like, I'm trying to leave tonight. Safe life. I'm pissed. Two seconds later. Y'all seen it. Usman tested me. Um. Usman tested me. Oh, what do I say? He wants to meet. He wants to meet. Um. Okay, let me unpack my clothes. Um. He wants to meet. So the producer was like, well, you gonna meet him? Because two seconds ago, you was on the plane. She was like, of course I'm gonna meet him. I'm an idiot. So here Kim, one second she leaving, then she gets a text from Usman who disrespected her. She ready. Oh yeah, I'm gonna meet him. Mm -hmm, I'm gonna meet him. Honey, she ran down there. Like you said, both. Jackie draw the cursing. Her and her needs. So, all this is laid out, got some candles, got some, some dead flowers, got a little table. Here she go. She got on her little Rossa shirt. I was like, okay, Golden Girls. So, she sat down. 
Here comes Usman, looking like somebody's brown trash bag. I said, Usman, what you got on? What do you, is that a slicker? What do you have on? So then he has a rap for um, Kimberly, and here is Kimberly. Oh my God. He, he, he wrote it. That's my song, y'all. That's my song. See, he loves me. That's my song. Zara. That's my song. She's smiling and tearing up. I said, oh, shit. So, Uzman, Kimberly. So, he's saying sweet things to her because I think it's their last night. And he says that he wants something with Kimberly. This is all just a farce and a lie. <laughs> Didn't he? He wrote this song for baby girl Lisa. He wrote this song for Zara. Now he got one for Kimberly and she thinks she's special. Go home. Here's an, another American just embarrassing the whole country. And as we see in the next preview. She got on his merch. Now, we don't see nobody else walking around there in Usman merch. We don't see no mugs, no glasses, no, no uh, pins to paper, no shirt, no hat, no fanny pack, no blanket. Ain't nobody walking around there with Usman merch but Kim. And then we see... The producers being dirty as usual and said, y'all gonna kiss. Kim was like, of course. Uman said, no. No. Mm -mm, no. See, that wasn't part of that. I wasn't planning on kissing her. See, that's all next week. But see, this week, you done wrote her a little song. F-A-K-E Don't love you. Kim, go home. Take whatever merch you have. Just burn it. And just leave it alone. Y'all, I am so sick of this cast. I'm sick of Usman. I'm sick of all of them. And that's it. Y'all know what to do. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, friends. Bye!